welcome the topic we will be discussing in today's session is process scheduling so why should we schedule process the operating system schedule process to ensure the maximum cpu utilization because cpu is the important resource in a computer and it should be used in an effective way and to ensure that process scheduling is done the process scheduler is the one which selects the next instruction to be executed by the processor and to do this the process scheduler maintains several types of queues so what are the queues the scheduler maintains that we will be discussing now so the first type of queue it maintains is called as job queue the job queue is the one which contains all the process that are currently in the system so it contains all the process that are currently in the system and then we have ready queue the ready queue is the one which contains the process which are ready for execution the ready queue contains the process processes which were ready for execution they are just waiting for cpu to be assigned and then we have the third type of queue which is called as device queues so if any process is waiting for any io device like uh, hard disk or printer then these process will be in the device queues say for example uh, there is a process p1 uh, and this process want to access the io device hard disk but hard disk is already getting accessed by some other process p2 then until p2 uh, finished accessing it should wait so so for that uh, there is a queue and that queue is called as device queue okay so for different device there will be different different queues so for hard disk there will be a different device queue so whichever the process waiting for the hard disk will be waiting in that queue and for printer there will be a different uh, device queue so the processes that were waiting for the printer will be waiting in that device queue and during its lifetime the process can move from one queue to another queue so this diagram shows like how these various queues are uh, managed by the operating system so basically operating system uses linked list to maintain these queues so you can see there are different types of linked list uh, is here say say this is a ready queue okay so this particular thing is a ready queue the first queue what we are discussing is is a ready queue so this i mean this is a ready queue so what this ready queue contains so basically it is a linked list so it contains two pointer the head pointer and the tail pointer the head pointer points to the first process and the tail pointer will point to the last process currently the ready queue contains two processes what are they it contain process 2 and uh, process 7 and process 2 so the respective pcb process control block it is referring so process control block includes all information about a process like we have discussed about this in the last class it includes the uh, process id and it includes the uh, registers okay it includes uh, uh, all other information about a particular uh, process okay so there is similarly all these are device queues all these are device queues for various devices so the first device is magnetic tape unit 0 so here it is assumed that the system has two magnetic tapes uh, so the first is called as unit 0 and the second one is called as unit 1 so so head is pointing to null okay tail is also pointing to null it means the queue is empty currently no device uh, is using the magnetic tape okay magnetic tape unit 0 similarly no device is using the magnetic tape unit 1 so here also head is pointing to null and tail is pointing to null and this is disk maybe hard disk so hard disk there are three devices are in the queue the three i mean three processes are in the queue process 3 process 14 and process 16 okay so all these are in the queue maybe process maybe the disk may be currently executing the Uh, process which is uh, which is pointed by head, so that is 
process three. Okay, and the res these are the respective process control block. And here also there is a head pointer and the tail pointer. The head pointer points to the first process, and the tail points to the last process. Okay. And there is a uh, and uh, and this is terminal. Terminal means your terminal. This is this is terminal. Terminal in the sense monitor. Okay, terminal means monitor. So basically, it is a display device. So how many processes are waiting to use the display device? So all the processes that were waiting to use the display device uh, will be kept in this particular queue, terminal queue. Okay. So so currently there is only one process uh, which is using the terminal, which is PCB five. So this process is pointing to. Uh, this process is not. Uh, so the next pointer of this particular process. Process control block five. Next, it is not pointing to anywhere else. It is pointing to null. And here, both the head and tail are pointing to the, the same uh, process control block of which which corresponds to process five, because this itself is the first process and this itself is the last process. So this is how the operating system uh, maintains the different queue and it ensures that uh, process scheduling is done in a, a proper way. Okay, so this diagram shows like uh, how the process moves from one queue to another queue. So, so, so initially the job is coming from. So you can assume that here, you can assume that here we have job queue. Okay, job queue is nothing but all the process in the system is represented by the job queue. Okay, here you can say that here. Uh, we have something called as a job queue okay so the processes will be one by one it will be moved from job queue to uh, ready queue okay depending on the empty space in the ready queue so the process in the ready queue are ready for execution and and it will be allocated cpu whenever their turn comes and it will be executed and the process which is running if it if it want to perform any io operation then it will place an IO request to the operating system. If the IO request is accepted, then it will enter into IO queue. IO queue is nothing but device queue. So IO represents device, any IO device. It will enter into the uh, IO queue or the device queue. Okay. So it will enter into this particular queue uh, because more than one device may request this particular IO. Okay. And then when the uh, when there are no more device or if this is the or uh, when there are no more process waiting for this particular IO, then this particular process will be given access and it will access the uh, IO device and it will perform the IO operation. Once the IO operation is completed again, it will enter into ready queue. Okay. So this is the case with respect to IO operation. Similarly, an executing process, if it time expires, for every process, there will be a time slice. Maybe we may say that process one should execute for three millisecond process 2 should execute for 4 millisecond process 3 should execute for 6 millisecond and something like that okay so if for a particular process if its time slice has expired then then it will uh, then 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 after executing that much amount of time it will directly move into the ready queue because it should wait for the next round of uh, cpu allocation okay it will continue until until the process completely executed. Sometimes a process may create a child process. Sometimes a process, a running process can create a child process. And child process are created in Unix using a command called fork. Using a command called fork, the child process can be created. So if the running process creates a child process, then it will wait until the child finishes execution. Okay, then it has to wait until the child finishes execution. So during that time, uh, also it will be in the wait queue okay and then once the child completed execution it will again go back to the ready queue okay or sometimes when a process is being executed some some interrupt may happen okay some interrupt may happen so so because of this interrupt the process may have to wait until the interrupt get completed okay then once the interrupt is over once again it will go back to ready queue okay so like this, during the lifetime, the process may move from uh, different states 
and for each states there may be different queues okay like this it will keep continuing how long it will continue in a sense until the process finishes execution so, so this is called as the queuing diagram which represents the different queues and resource flows fine then we'll discuss uh, different types of schedulers that are normally available in an operating system an operating system basically supports two types of schedulers the first one is called as short term scheduler the next one is called as long term scheduler so first we will try to understand what is a short term scheduler short term scheduler is also called as cpu scheduler short term scheduler is otherwise called as cpu scheduler so these are the scheduler or it is also called as dispatcher there is another name for short term scheduler which is also called as dispatcher so these are the scheduler which moves the process from ready queue to the process to the processor okay so short term scheduler is the one which moves the uh, process from the ready queue to the processor that is it is the one which which assigns processor uh, with a particular process and this scheduler should work uh, uh, at a very higher speed because it will be invoked very frequently so it should work at a very higher speed because because if you take a typical cpu the cpu may may execute a particular process for very few time maybe 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds okay which is which is a very small amount of time so within that time immediately immediately the scheduler should uh, once once that 50 millisecond is over the scheduler should bring the next job uh, to the processor okay so this should uh, uh, work very fastly and and it will be invoked very frequently so this scheduler should be designed in such a way that it it should be able to operate in a uh, at a higher speed okay say for example a job needs uh, i mean uh, a job will be assigned to a processor for 100 milliseconds assume uh, that is the processor will execute a process for 100 milliseconds okay for or let us assume for each process process for each process this particular processor it will uh, 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 before context switching before context switching each time it will execute for 100 milliseconds okay now let us say that Uh, it takes uh, 10 milliseconds for the short term scheduler to decide which process should be next assigned to the processor it takes 10 milliseconds for the short term scheduler to decide which process which process should be assigned to the processor okay so in that case in that case what happens in the sense how much percentage of time is getting wasted so how can we calculate this how much percentage of the time is getting wasted so the time which is getting wasted is it is wasted in the sense uh, the time at which the cpu is not uh, being utilized because uh, the scheduler is making the decision like which process should be moved into the which process should be allocated to the processor so how much time is getting wasted in the sense it is equal to 10 by 100 plus 10 10 by 110 Uh, which is equal to uh, which is equal to 0.09 okay which is equal to 0.09 that is 9 percentage of uh, cpu time is getting wasted here okay 9 percentage of cpu time is getting wasted here because during that time cpu is not getting utilized okay so so now you can understand like at at, at what rate this scheduler should be working it should be working at a very high speed right okay so the second type of scheduler that we have is called as long term scheduler the long term scheduler these are the scheduler which moves the processes from the hard disk to the ready queue okay short term scheduler what it does it it assigns the process from ready queue to the processor okay whereas long term scheduler is the one which moves the processes from the uh, from the hard disk to the ready queue okay so the long term scheduler is the one which decides the degree of multi programming and these scheduler will not be invoked frequently so they can be they need not be as fast as the short term scheduler 
and this controls the degree of multi programming multi programming in the sense uh, how many process uh, the process can run simultaneously so that that will be decided by the long term scheduler okay so short term scheduler is the one uh, which assigns the processor which assigns the process to the processor okay the process in the ready queue to the processor and it should work at a very faster speed and it will be invoked more frequently and long term scheduler is the one which moves processes from the hard disk to the ready queue they will be invoked less frequently and they need not be that fast and this controls the degree of the multi programming that that is this scheduler decides like uh, how many process the particular processor can execute simultaneously okay and in some cases in some cases there may be the third type of scheduler which is called as medium time schedule medium term scheduler okay so yeah before going to medium term scheduler let us discuss something else uh, which is called as a process can be of two types a process can be of two types either io bound process or it may be cpu bound process okay what is an io bound process io bound process in the sense it spends most of the time in io operation io bound processes it spends most of its time in performing io operation okay say say a particular process totally it needs uh, 200 milliseconds to execute that uh, the total time required by this particular process is 200 milliseconds but let us assume that out of this 200 milliseconds it is spending 150 milliseconds in io operation okay then such a process will be called as io bound process because during its entire life time uh, it is spending more time in io operation and similarly there is another type of process which is called a cpu bound process which spends more time on computation okay the cpu bound process are the one which spends more time on performing computations okay so what so what does it mean say say let us assume there is a process uh, again which which requires totally 250 milliseconds so this particular process it, 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 it totally requires 250 milliseconds uh, but let us assume that out of this 250 milliseconds 200 milliseconds it spends on performing computations computation operation remaining 50 milliseconds may be on io operation or something so such process is called as cpu bound process okay so now what the scheduler should do scheduler should ensure that at any point of time scheduler should ensure that at any point of time the ready queue contains a good mix of io bound process and cpu bound process okay there should be a good mix of io bound process and cpu and uh, cpu bound process okay so it is not that all processes are io io bound that should not happen all the process in the ready queue is io bound that should not happen similarly all the process in the uh, ready queue or cpu bound that should not happen so long term scheduler should ensure this why why it should ensure that if all the processes were io bound then what will happen then what will happen in the sense most of the time these process will spend in io operation most of the time these processes will spend in io operation so cpu will be idle cpu will be idle so in in that case cpu will be underutilized so cpu will be idle for most of the time so it means that you are underutilizing the cpu okay on the other hand if most of the processes were cpu bound then what will happen then most of the time cpu uh, the processes will be spending on computation the processes will be spending on computation and the io devices will be idle or the io devices will be underutilized okay so both should not happen cpu also should not be underutilized and io devices also should not be underutilized so this both, either thing should not happen okay to ensure that the long term scheduler should make sure that at any point of time the ready queue contains a good mix of uh, cpu bound process and io bound processes okay so next in some Uh, operating systems or some processor may support another type of scheduler which is called as medium term scheduler so this scheduler is used to to decrease the degree of multi programming okay 
so long term scheduler uh, controls the degree of multi programming whereas medium term scheduler is used to decrease the degree of multi programming so basically why it is used in the sense it is used to remove certain process uh, from the ready queue or uh, the process that are allocated to the cpu to hot disk okay it will it may swap out few process to the hot disk okay and and later after a period of time it may swap in so this process is called as swapping so this process is called as swapping removing process from memory and storing it on disk and again bringing it back when it is required so sometimes if you want to say sometimes your your computer is getting very slow because of so many process in the ready queue so then the operating system may decide to swap some process so this swapping will be done by a particular scheduler and that scheduler is called as medium term scheduler what it will do it will remove either the currently executing process and uh, keep it in the hot disk or it may remove some of the process in the ready queue and move it to the hot disk and later and later again the system speed increased considerably it may swap in so this process is called as swapping and that will be done by a particular scheduler and that scheduler is called as medium term scheduler okay so these are the different types of scheduler long term scheduler short term scheduler and medium term scheduler and also here we have discussed what is meant by cpu bound process and what is meant by io bound process okay. so thank you